Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about control realization. This is our second example and in this example I will continue with the PD controller the realization. So we will discuss the calculations for that and also verify these in SPI simulations. So let's look at our example. We have the following problem which is a design problem. We would like to have a physical analog electronic circuit for a given PD controller transfer function which is here given GPD is equal to 2 times s plus 4 in the Laplace domain. So how can we realize this physically? That's the question in place here. Now let's look at the solutions. There are many solutions to really realize this transfer function and one of them is this. This is a basic inverting amplifier. You see the feedback versus R2 and also the input part here which is normally just R1 if you have an inverting amplifier. Now we have a CM parallel and it makes the dynamics which will then create this PD transfer function. So we like to calculate then these three parameters or the component values. Now for the transfer function of the circuit, we can write the following. We can say the H, which is then specifically the circuit transfer function, the VO over VI. And these quantities are all in the frequency domain. That's why we have it in capital letters. So we can say the H is then V over VI. And if I look at it, I can recognize the feedback as the ZF and also the input part as the ZI. So I can recognize this like this and I can write it down in general form Z feedback over Z input, which is then the impedances. But ZF is just a simple resistor R2, so that's easy. But the ZI is the parallel combination of the R1 and the cap capacitor C. And it's actually the capacitor reactance XC. Okay, the X of C is given in the Laplace domain, one over the CS, and that's actually shown here. And we have then the parallel combination formula for that R1 times the one over SC over the summation of these two. That's what's shown here. And if you now simplify this further, you will get this expression. Now, we have our ZF, we have our ZI. We can now bring them together in this expression for the uh, transfer function. We have now this expression. Now, simplify this further. We can now multiply the numerator and the denominator by this term which is R1 CS plus 1. You will get this. Now further for, uh, simplification is required because we would like to compare this later with this given transfer function. So I would like to isolate this S here as it is here because the coefficient in front of this S is just 1. So I would like to also make this one. In order to get that one I need to get rid of this R1 C. So I need to take it out. In order to take it out I need to do here 1 over R1 C. So that's actually what I do. That's the next one. So I will keep this just the denominator here, but just only change the numerator. Now R1 times C goes out. That's the product here. And the C plus now 1 over the R1 times C. Now you can recognize more easily what that uh, transfer function look like also in the circuit form. Now we can simplify this further because I see the R1 and R1 can cancel each other out and you will have this expression. Now we see minus R2 times C in the parentheses times the S plus 1 over R1 times C. This minus is just because it is an inverting action, so we can just ignore that for the moment. But that is now the transfer function we required from the circuit. Now we can recognize the following. We can also make the KPD, which is the PD controller gain, and also the ZPD, which is the PD controller zero. Okay. So we can say the KPD is just this value. Product is the R2 times C. And we have also the zero, which is the one over the R1 times C. Now, now let's compare the terms of the GPD and the H of the circuit. So we can recognize the following. The four here is actually this one. So we can say S plus four here in the GPD is actually S plus one over R1 C. So it means one over R1 C is four. And also, R2 times C, if you just ignore the minus sign for a moment, that's also 2. So we can say these are the two equations. But we have two equations, but we need three values we need to calculate. So that means we have three unknowns and two equations only. So we cannot get a unique solution for all of them. So we just need to select uh, one of the components. And the best choice to select the component is the capacitor, because practically that is a little bit harder to find. The suitable values compared to the resistor. So we just say, take this capacitor as one microfarad, for example, and then move on with your calculation of the R1 and R2. For example, if you do this capacitor of one micro, and we can now use this formula, we can say R1 is then equal to one over 
4C. And that will give us this 250 kilo ohms. So you can also now calculate the value of R2 using this formula. R2 times C will be 2, so that means R2 is then 2 over the C. So you can just substitute the value we have chosen for the capacitor and you will get 2 mega ohms. So we have now the selected capacitor values and also the R1 and R2 we have calculated here. So let's bring them here together. We have all the values here in the summary. Now we look at the simulation results and the frequency response. This is the frequency response. You can see the circuit again here. This is the circuit we have uh, drawn in the simulator. And the blue line is our gain response. This is the gain in dBs and this is the frequency in Hertz from 1 millihertz all the way to 100 Hertz plotted here. You see several things here, so let me go one by one. First, before that, this is the transfer function we have for this circuit. And the ZPD was 4 radians per second because that's for this uh, system. And we have also KPD, which was 2. Okay. Now, what is now the KPD and what is the ZPD? Now, the product of that one is called the low frequency gain. Why? Let's look at the transfer function here or the circuit itself. But let me start with the transfer function. Low frequency means that the S is 0. That means if I substitute here S, it will be then 2 times the 4. That means 8. You can also look at it like this. So the gain is then 8. If the DC uh, condition applies, that means the S is 0 or omega is 0. The frequency is 0 hertz. Then the capacitor is an open. That means you only have the resistor here, R2, and the resistor R1 because this is open. So you get actually the normal inverting amplifier again. So that means the 2 mega ohms over the 250 kilo ohms. That means also 8 as an ab uh, absolute value for the gain. So you can see that from the transfer function, also from the circuit itself. So the product of the KPD and the ZPD will give you the low frequency gain. But of course, this is a scalar value. We need to convert that to the dBs. For that, you need to use a 20 log of that product. That will give you 18.06 dB, which is also shown in the plot. So this is sort of the low frequency gain because these are the low frequencies. Now we need to also check the other parameter, which is the zero of this uh, transfer function. So this is the low frequency gain. So the zero is here, and that is, of course, in frequency in Hertz. So this is a different unit. And if I pinpoint this here by looking at this value, which is then 18.06, I need to go up by 3.01 dB. That's actually the same thing when you go down, when you have a pole. Because here there is a zero, which will then increase this towards the uh, towards uh, let's say the slope line, and that means you go up by 3.01 dB. Okay. So that means then the following: I make a vertical line, I mean horizontal line here, and I go up. And I also check this in this vertical axis here, and I recognize then that this frequency will be then 636. Point 605 millihertz so you can just recognize that here and that is in hertz so if you multiply by 2 pi then you can convert that unit to the radians per second and that is 4 radians per second so it's also verified from this location that the zero is indeed correct so we can also do the extra check which is the check for the slope of this line after uh, let's say the zero so for higher frequencies the slope must be a positive 20 dBs per decade or plus 6 dBs per octave for just first order the zero. So we can look at two locations. I have here the 5 Hz and 50 Hz. 5 Hz is this dB, so 36 dBs. And at 50 Hz, 50 Hz, there is almost 56 dBs. So this increase from the frequency is one decade, but the go up is almost 20 dB. So it's approximately 20 dB up. And this distance here for this to, towards that frequency is 10 times larger. That means one decade. But I see in one decade up, I go 20 dB up. That is also the confirming that is indeed the first order zero. So it confirms everything and it means our design circuit is correct. So we will then realize this transfer function using this circuit again, just one of the options. All right, guys, this is our example about a PD controller realization using a physical electronic circuit in this configuration. And we have checked that using the simulations for the frequency response. This is also called the body plot. And we've uh, seen that 
everything was indeed as calculated. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. There's also another video in the example number one about a PI control realization using analog electronic circuits. So you can also check that. In the next video, I will try to also discuss the PID controller realization using analog electronics. So stay tuned and we'll see each other next time. Take care.